Please welcome to the program, Joseph Gordon-Levitt! Thank you, man. Welcome. Good to see you. How's things? Very well, thanks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> the, uh, listen, dude, it's a funny movie, and it was funny and also sort of heartbreaking because you can hear the way your characters in the most base way talk. Yeah. to each other about women, <laughs> yeah. and then it forces you to look at yourself in your own language and go, dude, I think we actually speak like that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. huh? Well, I find that comedies, look, I like the Marx Brothers or funny yuck yuck comedies, yeah. but oftentimes my favorite comedies, the ones that make you laugh because they do feel like, oh, I know how that feels. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, like 500 Days of Summer, that's one of my favorite things that I've done, and like, it's like that, you know, it's With not the great like- Mark Webb, a wonderful director. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. And so, getting into this world, like, when a guy, when a guy who's known as an actor says, "Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to direct a film. I'm going to make a film," uh -huh. it's important. The first foot you put forward. Sure. Why this one? Well, I think uh, you know it's a story sort of about how people sometimes treat each other more like things than like people, and how the media contributes to that. I play a character, and Scarlett Johansson plays a character where you know the young man watches too much pornography, and the young woman watches too many romantic Hollywood movies. And they're equally dangerous to yeah. a relationship. That's exactly it. Yeah. Well, and also it's interesting that you can point themes. You know, I was, uh, themes of sexuality that are in this film, uh -huh. and imagery, pornography. And then, you know, I read your mother's blog, and she tackles it head on uh -huh. with pictures of sexuality and all that and about how adver ad advertisements um, reach our brains. What, did you learn stuff like this from your family when you were growing up? Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, my, my mom and dad are very much, you know, uh, people who were active in the 60s and 70s in feminist movements as well as civil rights or anti-war movements, and, and I think they raised my brother and me to, to have some of those values and to think of women not just as sex objects, even though lots of images in the media are constantly saying that. Certainly not just pornography, no. perfectly mainstream Here, images. Here's one that, that she put up that's so powerful, you know, that the image show only parts of a sexualized person's body, uh -huh. and it's a car on a girl's face, right? Uh -huh. And it's a really great, it's a great thing that she did. Yeah, that's funny. This is, yeah. you're, you read my mom's Tumblr. Look at it, man. It's really it's, funny. <laughs> because it's smart. Uh, it is smart, you're right. You know? you're so, right. So when you were growing up, were those the sorts of conversations you think that informed this kind of yeah, choice? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I remember, um, like, as a family, we'd always watch basketball. Big Laker fan. Yeah. Sorry and about that. We'd, yeah, recently it's been a little a little awkward. You're right. But uh, we still, we stick with them, man, because yes. they're the home team. But, uh... But so whenever the cheerleaders would come on, my mom, even when I was a kid, when I was like, you know, four or five or something, watching the Lakers with, with my brother and dad and mom, yeah. uh, would, my mom would always kind of roll her eyes at, at the cheerleaders, and not out of any disrespect for the individual young women who are being the cheerleaders, but just the concept of it. And right. my, what she would always say is, so this is what women can do. See what men can do. They're these great, skilled, talented athletes, and the women get to do this. And what? And she would always try to bring that to light and, and talk to my brother and me about it, and um, and yeah. So she she's seen the movie and she really likes it, you know. And 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 I talked to her. I showed her the first draft of the script, and she's really I think uh, proud and amused that that what I ended up writing my first movie about was these things that that I grew up hearing from her. Could you relate to all the dialogue? You know, the, your character is so harsh in the beginning. It's hilarious. Sure. Well, look. I think it's a pretty common thing, for example, for guys to rate women on a scale of one to 10. Her That's face like, is an eight, the rest is a seven. Yeah, right, all that stuff. But then <laughs> your buddy going, twos and threes, man, they're more creative in bed, yeah, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah, well, Which exactly. is awful, but amazing <laughs> for comedy, right? It, it always gets a laugh. Those are some <laughs> open-minded ladies, twos and threes. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've heard it enough, yeah. and I would, I would be lying if I said I never participated in those conversations. Right. Uh, I think I probably have less than some, um, but it is worth making fun of, you know, and that's why, that's why I think that it's, it's good to have the movie be a comedy, because I, I think that movies that are sort of trying to talk about something substantial, it's often best done with comedy, whether it's like Dr. Strangelove talking about nuclear war with this broad farce, or... Um, and did, and apparently Kubrick didn't even set out to make it a comedy. It what? Just, yeah, like initial ideas, they wanted a drama, but then it was just so absurd, No, it had to be a comedy. No, I don't believe that. That's the story, that's the mythology around that. I didn't know that. Yeah, like early on when they first commissioned a film about the nuclear war, it was to be scary, but the more research they did, they thought this is just absurd, the way we approach life. Um, and that it became a comedy. That's, I wasn't there. That's the mythology that surrounds it. All right, have, have you ever seen Failsafe? Uh, 
Remind it's a really me. great movie. Uh, Walter Matthau is the, is the m most known actor in it, but it's like it's like Doctor Strangelove, except yeah. it's a drama. Right. Okay. I always figured they were just sort of spoofing Failsafe. Well, maybe who knows what their intention? Yeah, but the, I never heard of that, that before. Because it because maybe that's one way we deal with such massive fear. Sure. Right. And massive pressure is we ha comedy reaches like us in a different way. I I know that I do that. I and I've done it in inappropriate times in my life before. Yeah. I remember I I was. I was living in New York um, when 9-11 happened. I was going to school there. And the, my first, first reaction, and I'm, I'm in, almost embarrassed and sort of mortified to say it, my first reaction was when someone first told me was to make a joke really quick. Right. And then, you know, the guy, uh, I, was, I was going to school at the time. I was, on, I was actually in class when it happened. And I remember coming out of class and running into this guy that I knew. And he was like, have you, you heard what happened? Blah, 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 blah. And, and I just instantly, without thinking about it, made some dumb joke about the Pentagon or whatever. And, uh, and he looked at me mortified, and I realized, and like, oh god, thousands of people are dead. That's terrible. It's not the time to make a joke. Right. But yeah, I don't know. That, that's an instinct that we have that's to I mean, use humor to cope or something. It's funny you brought up the Pentagon, you know? Listen to this radio clip from back in the day. Okay. Listen to this. Some sources feel this is because the theft charges amount to theft of information, and that a conviction would mean a conviction of the First Amendment. From the federal courthouse, this is Dennis Levitt, Pacifica Radio, Los Angeles. <laughs> that is, I totally didn't recognize his voice. That's my dad. That's your dad. That was my dad. Yeah. I didn't recognize it until the very end, until he said his name. He's a reporter. He, was, he was a journalist yeah. before I was born. Yeah. In fact, my mom and dad met at a uh, at, at that radio station, KPFK. It's a public radio station in Los Angeles that does sort of. Uh, what would, I guess, now be called progressive-oriented news. It's interesting how all these little things that happened in your childhood are kind of manifesting themselves in you as an artist now. You're right, you're right. Well, my mom and dad did definitely raise me to uh, want to be a contributor. To, you know, it's not just about what you can get for yourself. How, how can you somehow play a part in the overall what's going on with the human race? So you're doing a TV show, another one, not like when you were on TV in the, in the early days, um, but uh, for uh, Hit Record. Yeah. So this is a really cool website. I first thought, heard of it and thought it was just music, but it's so much more that happened. Mm -hmm. You created a space for people to collaborate. Yeah. People who wouldn't otherwise make money and find a way to make money on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this you and your brother started it? Yeah, me and my brother started it. We, we call it a, an open collaborative production company. Uh, open because anybody can come and contribute. And collaborative, we use the internet, you know, on our site, hit record, uh, and to work on our projects together. And, and it's a production company. We've um, we've we've screened our short films at Sundance and and TIFF. Actually, we've we've screened at TIFF. Um, we've published books and we've put out records. And now we're making a TV show, which um, is connected to participant media. That's right. And those guys make product that's about something. Yes. So is, there an, is there an expectation that there, it will be about something? Yes. Yeah. Well, and and I think. What it's about, ultimately, and the, the ultimate thesis of Hit Record, that's, that's sort of a metaphor, just the name, is like, push the button. It comes from, it started when I, I was younger, and, and uh, I've been acting since I was a kid, and I quit for a while, and then when I wanted to come back, I couldn't get a job, and I realized I have to take responsibility for my own creativity. I have to be the one to push the button. Before or, speaking of pushing the button, before yeah. or after this moment, are you talking about this, where you showed <laughs> how smart you were? This Salinger oh, novel after this. hates <laughs> movies, phonies, and his classmate, Ernest Morrow. Joey, what is Kitcher in the Rye? Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so, you were, you were saying? Yeah. You were saying? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to address it. You don't have to address it. <laughs> you were so excited. Hey, man, it's a good book. <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> so you were saying? You were saying? Well, I, I, you know, the idea of Hit Record is that we can all be a part of the media. You know, the, the way that technology has changed is a huge difference for the human experience in general. I think that we're no longer just watching what a small click of an industry is showing us, that we can all participate in, in mass media and mass communication. And so Hit Record is sort of me trying to take advantage of that as an artist. I mean, like, okay, well, then let's all make stuff together. I know your brother since passed, but he would get a real kick out of this, wouldn't he? Where it's at. He certainly would, man, and it's it's a great way that I get to feel connected with him. Sure. Um, because it's something that we started and we had grand dreams for, and, and so to continue making those dreams happen, like, helps me, you know, uh, cope with his loss. Of course, of course. Um, congrats on Don John. Uh, you've got another film coming soon down the road, I'm sure. Not yet, no. Well, right mind, now, you... the next thing's hit record on TV. But so. Is there another story you want to tell? 
Oh, there's a million stories. There's always a million stories, right? Come back and talk about them when you're ready. It's great to see you, man. You too. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, thanks for joining my buddy.